Hey guys, it's me, your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD. And welcome back to our in-depth playthrough of Elden Ring. So right off the bat, you notice that we are in a completely different place than where we left off last time, which was in Castle Morn. But today, we're going to start episode 12 off with a hint of excitement. Now, I had disclaimed right at the beginning of this series that some parts of this playthrough could very well be blind. And these are going to be two such instances. So what do you say? Let's go get our asses kicked. Now, one of these places I did not know existed. And it is right here, these tombs were catacombs. Now, I ran in here and I lit the grace just a minute ago. Uh, that's as far as I walked in. I do not have a key. <laughs> we might have to come back for whatever that is. Um, you know what? As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to do you guys like that. Let's do this. Let's run out here because we can't warp while we're inside. Let's do this. I'll run over to the Finger Maidens real quick, and without wasting too much time, I'll just buy the Stone Sword keys that are available here. And uh, we can go down into this catacomb and get every single item, because I've never done this catacomb. I'm interested to see what the item is. Okay, I think it only required one, so we'll just buy one for now. And we'll do this should have been right here well not quite there I think it's the one just above it so let's do that I've really been enjoying the weeping peninsula a lot it's uh it's a really great place to cover early in the game because you can find a lot of really useful stuff I mean getting the shield barricade and uh, this Knight Rider flail is an enormous game changer Let's see what this item is. Anybody in here? Yes, what do you know? Skeletons, which... Woo! We even have blunt and holy damage to boot, and these things are not dying in one hit. That's crazy. Shouldn't be a problem, though. Yeah, this, this should be an entertaining one. You guys are going to get to see how I do. Ooh, a cookbook. A tier 9 one. Let's take a look. You guys are going to get to see how I do in areas that I'm not familiar with at all. You guys are going to get to see firsthand how much I suck at these games when I'm not uh, showing people how to play them. <laughs> the Rancor Pot. Okay, let's take a look at that. I don't think I'm familiar with that item. Is it this one? What does it do? It needs grape violets and a human bone shard. Uses FP to throw, or throw to spawn a vengeful spirit. Okay. Sure. Why not? Let's make a couple. We're going to get more human bone shards, doesn't matter. Uh, one of these statues is, uh, sometimes I feel like if you cast certain incantations in front of these, they will disappear. This is going to have to be one that I write down in my little Elden Ring notebook to come back to. I do not have an Elden Ring notebook. I am incredibly disorganized as a human being. So there's going to be our boss door. Let's see what we got in here. Is it just skeletons? No, I'm fine with that. I kind of want to see what these vengeful spirits do. Because if it's anything like what I think it is, if it's going to be similar to like... Um, there's a, a different kind of vengeful spirit that you can summon in this game. That's... Uh, I think they're called wraiths. And... They come in many different forms. Weapon arts, throwable items, you name it. Oh wow, we just completely knocked him down. That was hilarious. Okay, I kind of want to... I kind of want to see what this thing does. Let's use it on the next enemy. Okay, I bet the lever is up there behind that statue. Skeleton archers. Alright. I ain't scared. Our shield's good. Bet there's a trap though, right? Yep. That guy's gonna come alive. And look at this guy over here. Are 
use the iframes to dodge the arrows. Oh, he dropped a bone shard. Okay. Let's see what this one does. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right. Oh, wow, he fucking punched me in the balls. Well, I don't have those. Not on my female. Now, most enemies in this game will kick when you get near them if they're using a ranged weapon. All right, let's do our due diligence here. Not to waste too much time, because I do fully intend to get into Castle Morn in this episode. I don't want these two caves to take super long. Let's, uh... Damn. Right in the heart. Alright, we'll work our way up. These are going to be skeletons right here. Come here. I really love this flail. I mean, you can't bleed a skeleton, but the strike damage. Oh my goodness. And just winding it up like, oh, <laughs> feels great. Okay, so these guys. Let's do this. Neat little trick. You can shoot them, get the same effect. I probably should have pointed that out earlier while I was trying to walk you guys through the content. <laughs> I like how you have an opportunity to just completely wax them while they're trying to find their head. It's just like, this skeleton is spawning from death, just like, ooh, finally somebody to fight. Let me just straighten my head. Boom. No. I'm completely dishonorable. Oh, wow. So that guy took additional damage by being struck in his blind spot. That was interesting. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. The, finally, a reason to stand on this thing, right? If it'll work. Hello? Don't make me... Don't make me attack the ground. If I even can... There we go. That's weird. There are some where you can just jump on them. Oddly enough. Well, hello! Nope. I wonder if there's a reason at all to even do this. Other than to get that item. Alright, what do we got? Where's all the trouble? Now, in some of these styles of catacombs, these walls are illusory. I know that there's going to be one over in the volcano, the volcano manor, where this exact pillar is in here, and one of these walls is illusory and has the the lever to get to the boss. Oh, okay. Oh, come on. Wow. <laughs> Our flask is really strong. So, I would, you know, I, <laughs> in the last video, I kind of described the, wow, his punch. It looks like he's using a bone. It's like he's detaching his own rib to stab me with it. That's kind of funny. Um, I had said that the catacomb that I was doing in that video is what I consider to be, like, the worst catacombs. I think this one might be just a little bit tougher. These skeletons are kind of tanky. Like, I was not expecting them to be this strong at all. Not in this area. Like, not in... Not in this area of Limgrave. So, instead of backtracking, I'm pretty sure that will take us closer to where we were, right? I think, anyway. Yeah, this is where we were, and then... Okay. Should be fire. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're good. 
Now we're going to go that other way, if you were, recall. So there was a totally separate way that we could have gone. This way. Let's see what's here. Just a room? With a, a grave wart? I don't like that. Oh, there's an item. Okay. You. I choose you. Yep. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, wow. There's a couple of them. All right. It won't matter, though. Shoot. This looks like a job for Barricade Shield. Oh, yeah. We'll do a twofer. No problem. We got the thank you carving. Okay, was wondering when I would find that. Great. Well, let's go murder the boss. Because we're just, uh, no, what, like a hair over ten minutes in? Not so bad. I don't want these two caves to take up the whole episode. I don't even want them to take up half of the episode. I want to, like, clear these. And then the boss door should just be right up here. Okay, let's see what's waiting for us in here. What is that? Get him, boys! Let's bubble up. I don't recognize this enemy. I mean, I do, but I'm really surprised that the game would throw something like this. Oh my god, I'm surprised the game would throw one of these at you so early. Oh my god. Oh, you can backstab him? That's interesting. <laughs> How about this, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> wow. All right, so that guy has a way of just, like, reaching you whenever the fuck he wants. That's interesting. Holy shit. Did you guys see that? Like, honestly, I'm at fault here, right? Like, you never panic roll. Never panic roll against the boss, but... Damn, that guy... I feel like those attacks that he was doing were... Shit. Damn it. I'm gonna aggro them. I feel like those attacks that he was doing are, like, perfectly, perfectly engineered to, uh, to catch you on your panic rolls, because, like, nothing I did worked. Like, there was no zero way I was gonna survive that fucking attack. That was crazy. Alright, let's give these puppies a buff, huh? Alright, come over here, you. My dogs are gonna fuck you up. I'm gonna hit you with some fire. Oh my god, the fire works good against him. I wonder what happens if we charge it. Let's do that, actually. Oh, yeah. Wow, if you cheese him with fire, he's a joke. That's hilarious. Loot the headless. You know what? My friend Jeremy was just telling me about this guy. Just telling me about how crazy good he is. Let's check this out. I have never got this guy on a playthrough. I have no idea. He's Okay, he costs 104. That's hefty, man, because, like, this guy, Banished Knights, both, there's two Banished Knights, and they both cost 100, and I already know that they're fucking insane. Like, they hit hard. This guy costs even more. And it looks like he's got the Great Spear. Okay, and a big-ass shield. Spirit of Headless Knight who leads the Mausoleum Soldiers. I get it, because that's where you find those guys. These headless dudes in spirit form guard the mausoleum. You probably saw them out in the field while we were doing the, like, just outside of this cave, like down in the valley. Ludal sacrificed her life so that in death she could continue to protect a soulless demigod until their revival, earning her the hero's honor of Erdtree burial. And you know what? It makes sense, because I was just saying before, I think these roots kind of go to the Erdtree. 
So, finding her down here, her ashes, for beating this person, because she was probably late to rest down here. That's very interesting. Ooh, hello. Let's get our root resin. Cool. Alright, I'll have to give Loodle a shot, because from what I understand, uh, Jeremy was telling me that she's kind of a badass. I mean, he had explicitly told me that she was the best spirit ash that he had been using up to a certain point in his playthrough. Okay, so the other one is down here. We can't warp there. Unfortunately, we're going to have to spend some time running over there because all I did was go over there to discover it, so I'd be able to point it out on the map and show you guys where we were going. Um, should not be difficult to get to, though. It should be very easy to find. All we have to do is get to that spot where, like, the bats were. And that should be it. Oh, fucking... Those guys are assholes. I want to get up on this just to, like, see if there's an item on it. Oh. No, give me the egg. Thank you. Eggs, dear brother. Eggs. Okay, we are headed the right way. We need to run past these flowers, and then we are going to hightail it past those stupid-ass bats, and then we'll be okay, I think. There shouldn't be any bats, actually. There it is. <laughs> Hidden away. Not the easiest to find. So this, right here, Morn Tunnel. Let's do it. And let's not uh, miss our drop-off right here, because you never know. There could be items. We don't want to miss them. Hey, bingo. Okay, a tier one. Still good, still good. It's one we don't have to buy or farm, you know. Alright, let's grab the grace. And we need to rest so we can get our stuff back. I cannot believe how bad that boss roughed me up, man. That bleed buildup was ridiculous. Alright, what are we dealing with? Okay, Misbegotten's. Alright. So, again, I'll reiterate. I've never done this one either. This is going to be completely new to me. Oh. oh my goodness, it made him turn around. That's hilarious. Alright. So, let's do this. I am 150% certain... That there's going to be some kind of nastiness waiting down there other than those guys. Because I already see the ones that shoot the bows. And you know what's really good for them. Is fire pots. So let's use up all the rest of our pots with that. I could experiment with the other one first, but... Let me sneak up on this guy. Oh my goodness. He wakes up anyway. That's mean. Oh... <laughs> Wow. And what's up there? Ooh, it's a miner. Okay. And now I don't mean somebody that's under the age of 18. I mean, like, somebody who is literally excavating. Mining. Alright. And we have the badass flail, so... Oh, yeah. And then we got ourselves another stone. Yeah, I have a feeling some kind of trouble is going to be waiting down there. Here's what we'll do. We'll experiment with this guy. I'm going to aim for the one that shoots arrows, if I can. Because they are just the worst. Wow, alright, hold on. Try to get a... there we go. Throw this. Oh my god, one hit. Holy crap, alright. <laughs> so we could totally make more of those. I mean, we have the items. I think we pick up some more bone shards. Now let's do this. Oh, yeah. 
And this, all I'm really doing is trying to like thin their numbers a little bit. You know what I mean? Like we don't want to get down there and then suddenly there's like five of them on us because not that the misbegottens are super hard to kill or anything because they're not. But when there's like too many of them, yeah, they can get kind of annoying. And especially these ones with the bows. Yeah, we'll finish this guy with a pot. There we go. See, those guys, they should honestly be easier than the ones with the swords, but they're not. Like, they have just as much health and defense. The only advantage you really have against them is similar to how the ones with the swords will jump into the air, and you have an opportunity to knock them down, you can knock those ones out of the air and get that same opportunity. And yes, I'm breaking all this shit because... Wow. I don't think so, sir. I also don't think so, sir. Ooh, okay, that will help us with Scarlet Rot. You see that? Yeah, you can basically tell these guys to eat shit with your weapon. And then I imagine this will take us to like that that base floor down there where we were picking them off and thinning their numbers out. Alright, let's get rid of this guy. Sorry, man. I know you're just trying to get your eight hours in, but... I've got content to upload. For people that uh, like to watch me. So I hear multiple of them snoring. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. couple hits will do it. Not bad. You don't want to forget this guy. He looks like he's guarding a upgrade stone as well. Let's get it. Okay. All tier 1s so far. And nope, that's not a complaint. You won't hear me complaining about it. It's, uh, it's still upgrade materials that we do not have to farm, which is great. That's super ideal. So now we're going to go back through this tunnel. And I think this is going to lead to the spot where we were throwing the fire pots. Okay, we are a stealthy cleric. Okay, there's one misbegotten. This is the one we knocked down. See? His health was basically gone. Hey, that's a somber stone over there. Nice. Okay, I think we got basically all these guys. Well, hi there. You missed. What are you fucking stupid? Okay, he dropped a smithing stone and we got one off the wall. Okay. Oh, he was right behind this barrel. These red barrels explode, by the way. If you have fire arrows, fire pots, whatever, you can just hit these. And if the monster is within, like, I would say 10 feet at least, hit that shit. Make them blow up. Okay, we can make more exalted flesh with the the red leaves. Damn, that just sounds like it and looks like it hurts really bad. So there's the boss. Okay, that means we need to double back this other way. But I always try to be thorough with the walls. Uh, what in the... Wow. We just need to R1 these guys. That's good to know. What are you trying to do? What's in here? Cotton. And then there's only one other direction that we need to double back in, if you guys recall. I'm making a mental map of where you're going inside these caves, however small or large they might be. It's always a good idea, and I have a natural sense of direction, so I typically don't struggle with this type of stuff, but if you find yourself getting a little bit turned around, and there's nothing wrong with that because everybody has their own unique flaws and drawbacks, and that's what makes us all beautiful. 
But if one of your drawbacks just happens to be that you get lost easily, something like that, there's nothing wrong with that. Just try to make a mental map of where you're going. Remember all the directions you did or didn't go in, and uh, keep kicking ass. I'm proud of you, and I know you can beat this game. Don't even get up. Should have just stayed down. He usually will drop the magic thing that you can throw that costs FP, and uh, will make the little magic pew-pews go everywhere. We got another somber stone. Fuck yeah. And then there's a chest in here. I'm curious to see what's in this chest. Fuck this guy up real quick. Ooh. That's a decent tier of rune. Exalted flesh. Alright. Speak of the num num. Hmm, what do you know? The large glenstone's crap. <laughs> Again, the thing I was just talking about. And that's it. We are clear. It's time to go crush this boss. I wonder what they're going to put in here. The only thing you ever see inside these mines is... Um, Fallen Star Beast. Thank God we don't have to fight that thing yet, even though there's like... I think four of them in this game. And we don't have to fight a single one of them yet. I'm really happy about that. Not that way. It is this way. But what else do you find? We found the Stone Digger Troll in the first one. And you will also find the Giant Space Cockroach, as I've nicknamed it, oddly enough. Some of you are going to know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that. Um, and then... Crystals. You'll find, like, crystals in some of them. Let's get the wolves ready. And we will buff them. Oh, this guy. Are you kidding me? I don't even need to buff my shit for this guy. These wolves can solo him, I bet. Let's do that thing we did. If I can hit him. Oh yeah, the damage. <laughs> now this guy has mad reach though, like you really gotta watch out for the reach. And he likes to wind his attacks up bad. Oh, we can backstab him, alright. Put him down. Hate it. Oh. <laughs> Did we just find the pirate bonk? <laughs> wow. A rusty anchor. That's funny. Okay, I gotta. I've got to check this out. What in the... F sea scaling and strength. It's... Oh my god. It's got 147 base damage. If you don't know, that's that's high. I mean, the Great Axe has 151. The Bonk doesn't even have that. It's got 131. Like, that's high base damage, dude. And it's got C-scaling and strength. It needs 26, though. I mean, it needs a hefty investment. But, I mean, it is. It truly is an anchor. A rusty anchor wielded as a weapon. Each of its four flukes is thick and sharp. Enabling pierce... Okay. That's cool. It's a great hammer class weapon or a great axe class weapon that has pierce damage. That is cool. So if you are a strength build and you you need something that scales decently in strength but you need thrust damage, this might be an option for you. When the Tarnished left the lands between with their lord, one boat alone was said to have been f left behind. And you know what? It could be that one that we saw out there. I mean... When we were looking out towards the cliff, we we did see the ships out here, you know? Maybe it's that guy. I found your anchor, bro. I mean, you can... You're clear for port, if you want it back. Actually, disregard that. I want it. I think I'm going to use it. That's hilarious. A rusty anchor. <laughs> I did not know that that weapon existed in this game. That's, that's funny as shit. Okay, great. So, I suppose we're, like, 
right at the halfway mark, you know. Um, let me do this. We are going to spend just a minute at the round table hold because I I know it's probably a better idea for me not to include most of like my maintenance and stuff like that on screen. Like these runs to the round table and leveling up and stuff, well, I could probably leave that leave that stuff out, but there. I don't know. So we can't upgrade this any further. Or this guy. We need a tier 3 for that. Let's see what else we have. What else do I intend to use? So this curved sword. We probably should start upgrading this because I want a curved sword. Just to have it. Um, what else do we have? This thing. It only needs regular smithing stones. That's funny. This could seriously be a badass weapon. Like, this thing has potential. Okay, this. Um, I'm going to save my tier 2 stones for the Knight Rider Flail, because if we need to power stance the Flails, we can, but I'm not going to prioritize it. I am going to pay a little bit of attention to this guy, though. And I'm again, I'm just going to save my Tier 2 stones for the Knight Rider Flail, so we can get that thing to plus 6. Because I think it's 5 right now, isn't it? Yeah. And then this, we will upgrade as soon as we can. I do like this thing, but... I think what's going to end up happening is this needs regular smithing stones, which is great, right? But there's another version of this that needs the that needs the somber versions called the the uh, the jar cannon, and we're going to get that at some point. And I think I would rather upgrade that for my super duper heavy, brutally powerful ranged weapon. Great. All right. I think we're doing pretty good. I still have Fia's Blessing on me, so... Why did I do that? Okay. Well then. You. I need this. I want it on me just because. Because I clearly have been having some issues with poison. <laughs> How much do I need to level up? 11,379. So just a little over 2,000 runes. Let's do this guy. That's 800. So if we use two more of those. And then I want... Cannot go wrong with health, man, I'm telling you. All right. I don't have very much on me. So, I'm going to go take another whack at this guy. Let's we'll see if we can beat him. Alright, come here, you jackass. And he does heal, too. So, like... See what we can do. I need my bubble. Whee! So disrespectful. No! Oh, you jerk. Oh my god, he hit so hard, even through the shield. Man, and those clouds stay everywhere, man. Like, they do not go away. Eee. I don't know how many times he heals, though. Oh, my God. That sucked. And 
And he has, like, basically infinite FP, too, which is kind of annoying. Oh! Hey! <laughs> God, that could have ended so badly had I not blocked. Mm. What a jerk, man. Oh my god. Fuck! Oh my god, the disrespect. Oh my god. Wow. I cannot dodge for my freaking life if I jump. I feel like if I jump, I am basically almost just guaranteed to get hit. Fuck you, man. This thing is good at roll catching. Ugh. Yeah, fuck off. I think it's 12,000? 1562? Hmm. I totally thought you got more than that for that guy, but... Okay, we still did it. Took more time than I cared for, but not bad. At least he's out of the way. And then the item that you get from that guy, take a look at it together. This guy, Lures in Invaders. It's just another multiplayer item. It's essentially like the Dried Finger, sort of, I think, from Dark Souls. I think that's the, I think that's the purpose that it would serve, similar to that. And now... You're able to jump down here at any time, and he won't come back. There won't be any more invaders down there, from what I understand. You don't get anything, like no doors open or anything for beating him, but you do get that spot down there you can teleport out of. So, a useful feature for that area down there is if you equip a weapon in here, like if you upgrade something and you're messing around with Ashes of War here at the round table hold, you can always jump over the ledge there and attack in there because your attack buttons don't work in here. So, let's do our thing. Let's, uh... Head back over to the Castle Morn, and let's start uh, start pushing our way through this place. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, we looked in this first room here, and for whatever reason, it's completely empty. I really I don't have an explanation for that. Let's go ahead and check this place out. So, Darkness. I'm going to start using Darkness in here, I think, because this is... One of the first places where it's really viable to show this spell, because you can get overwhelmed pretty quickly, and darkness is an excellent way to escape skirmishes. So, let's have a look at this opening area real quick. We pointed this out in the end of the last video. You've got uh, several different kinds of enemies here. There's dogs off to the left, and then even further off to the left up these steps, there's even more dogs, but I'm going to show you guys how I would progress through this place. So, lock onto the dogs first, and whether you're using a bow or a crossbow, whatever it is you have, I would recommend using that to pull these dogs. Like, bring plenty of arrows, bolts, all that stuff. And try to have better aim than me, because this is not going very well. Wow, I really suck. Because for some reason it won't hit him when I lock on, but like, there we go. So, you don't really have to crouch for this part. You have to get kind of close to those guys. Okay, our damage is fine. We should get through this place just fine. Um, I stay crouched just because I want the least possible chance of aggroing any of that nonsense. But what you're going to want to do is just take your time. You know, pull these dogs one at a time. 
as soon as you block, you're gonna stand up. Like, I don't know what the deal is with this thing. Like, it has one of the best guard counters in the game because it swings, like, vertically right up in front of you, sort of like an uppercut. And it's very fast, but... I don't know, it's just, sometimes it's weird. But yes, you will stand up automatically if you guard while you're prone. And I guess that's just not viable against the dogs, so I'm just going to stop trying. Okay, you have more dogs up here. So one of them is going to be right there in front of that corpse. And the other one is off to the side over here, I believe. Yep, I see him poking through. And this one, there's really no way to, like, do this correctly. So what I would recommend you do is use whatever you have to try to kill this dog in one hit instead of pulling him. Because as soon as you attack him, the other one typically comes running out. Okay, I've got some beast blood. And there we go. There's another tier 2 smithing stone. We should get a few of those in here, actually. Alright. So now... I can hear the fighting up there. Can you? So now what we're going to do is relatively simple. It's going to take a long-ass time, but it's the smartest thing to do in this situation. that roar that they do you saw how much stamina it took off of me right make sure you block that i don't recommend getting hit by any attack to begin with but if there's one attack that these guys do that you can really do yourself a favor by avoiding it's that one wow this is like kind of annoying the crossbow kind of has a, a drawback to it i guess it is faster than the bow but the uh the bolt is just so much more precise. Sometimes it misses. It goes like right... I feel like it went right in between his arm and leg. Let's try from this angle. Yeah, it is not having any of my shit today. Alright, let's just try to shoot him by aiming. There we go. I don't care to have to aim like it doesn't bother me because I want to use this crossbow. It's a confessor weapon, you know? finish these guys off pretty easily they're not dangerous unless they all come at you at once and that's why i love the guard counter on this weapon because they can recover pretty quickly after they do that flying drop kick attack that they do but it's not faster than the guard counter And then we have tons of smoldering blood, blood butterflies. You can probably see them floating over these fires. I tried to avoid that animation because it's kind of a waste of time. <laughs> it's very satisfying to watch. It does a lot of damage, but uh, we don't need it to defeat them. This one's going to miss, I bet. Yep. Okay. No problem. I love this thing. I just want to talk about that for a second. This crossbow looks like a Bloodborne weapon or something. It's very cool. That was right in the kidney. That's it. It was me. Come here. God, I love this weapon. This this thing is sick. Like, <laughs> the, the, the flail, I think, needed to happen sooner in these Souls games. It's very fun to use. So now, we're going to worry about these guys. And thank God this guy up here is so stupid, he doesn't care that his followers are literally being picked apart, one by one. Alright, so I guess while we're doing this, since it's very time consuming to pick these guys off one by one, we can uh, try to cover a little bit of the story of what's going on here. So I briefly talked about it before, right? I think I did. Briefly mentioned kind of what's going on here it looks like they're being rallied they're celebrating a, a victory of, of a battle of some sort against the inhabitants of this castle which would be soldiers of godric it looks like but 
One thing to note about this battle that's going on here is we ran into an NPC named Arena, who is the blind girl, right? You guys recall that, I'm sure. But she was talking about how her father is the captain of this castle. He's stationed here as captain, is what she said. And we're going to find him relatively soon. He's, he's pretty early in this level. He's easy to find. I'm going to grab this real quick, this fire grease. Um, it would be smart for me to use that against this guy, so I think I'll do that. But before I touch him at all, I want to make sure that all the enemies are dead. Oh, we have plenty of fire grease. That's awesome. I can't use it. That's right. I have holy on my weapon. I should probably do something about that. Even though it'll cost me quite a bit of damage. Okay, let's get a backstab on this guy. And then we'll charge him on wake up. There we go. So these guys have slightly more poise, right? He'll roll towards you like that. Keep backstabbing him, you know, take advantage of his clunky movement. But uh, I don't recommend handling these ones the way you would the ones that we were fighting a second ago. Like, I know that I made that look pretty easy, but that guy, he hits really, really hard with that axe. I'm telling you, he's, he's significantly more challenging than the others, even if I didn't make it seem that way. So what, I would highly recommend just doing that, taking advantage of when he leaves his backside open to you. Just go for the critical, and then charge your attacks, if you can, on wake up once he's in the middle of standing up. 100% do that. So we're going to go progress over into this area first, and we're going to pick up a very familiar weapon that is just a staple in the Souls games. Nice. So the Claymore is great, right? I mean, it's got... I'll show it off for you real quick. Claymore has the same exact moveset that it's always had. Most of the great swords we have in this game have the Bastard Sword moveset, and I mean almost all of them. It's really refreshing to have a great sword that has a thrust moveset, though. And I mean, just in classic Souls fashion, even two-handing it, it's a thrust weapon. So, it has your regular, super satisfying great sword swings... But having that thrust is really nice. It's really good for closing distance. It's really good for wake up. It's great for charged attacks. It's just, I vastly prefer that over the swing that you get with the bastard sword moves at the slash motion. Okay. Here we go. They're going to start fighting. <laughs> oh my goodness. They sent him right the fuck over the edge. the roar. Damn, I think I got pushed off. So, what I was mentioning before is that with Arena's father being stationed here, and we are going to go talk to him, she had mentioned in her dialogue that the servants of the castle went insane, and she could hear, like, howling and yelling, and I want to compare that to what we learned about uh, Kennedy, the guy that is uh, talked to us, talked to us about Fort Height. So, Kennedy Height of the the great fort that uh, we ransacked completely. Damn, these guys are just going at it, man. Oh. 100% thought that the roar was coming. That's crazy. So, this, I guess, is the servants that are going crazy and fighting the Godric soldiers and, uh, and, and knights now. And it's interesting to see this happening because we don't think of these misbegottens when we think of the servants going nuts, right? Like, we don't think that these would be the servants. These things are, are pretty hostile, you know? They seem kind of crazy, like they'll attack anybody. But apparently that's not the case. And look, they, they've got their soldiers hanging from the rafters and stuff. Okay, that's a, another multiplayer item. Okay, and we got a purple item over here. Something that's the game is telling us that this is an important item. That's it. One at a time. And I like how these guys in their animation, they're just 
they're hacking shit apart, like. Damn. That headbutt is like, it comes out quick, man. <laughs> it doesn't do hardly any damage, but it opens you up to another attack. So the Steel Wire Torch. We'll talk about this in just a second. Um, I'm going to finish my thought about the lore and what's going on here in this castle. So I want to, the reason I bring up Kennedy is because he was talking about, you know, reopening his relations with the Demi-Humans, which are the smaller things that travel in groups and uh, look almost beast-like in nature. Not like these things, a little bit different. Um, he was talking about reopening his lines with them and how they, and he said in that dialogue particularly, he was like, you seem surprised that we could work with the Demi-Humans and it is surprising because like, that's not what you think of when you think of Demi-humans, you know, you think of you think of these creatures that travel in packs and will attack you the, the instant they see you. And you would be right to think that because that's exactly what the fuck they do. <laughs> so I think it's interesting that Kennedy of Fort Height wants to work with the Demi-humans, and it turns out that the people of this castle wanted to work with the Misbegottens. So to explain where I'm going right now. This is exactly where we would have ended up had we gone straight forward towards the pumpkin head instead of uh, going to get uh, the claymore in that other direction. So you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, where it'll loop together. Let me sneak past this guy. I want to show something kind of interesting here. So this guy, he's got kind of a scary weapon. It's not good. <laughs> But I do want to show this interesting clip of what happens. Oh yeah, we do great damage against this guy. Okay, so now that he's aggroed, that demi-human should not demi-human. God, I keep mixing them up. This misbegotten should come running. Check this out. They are not on the same side. Turns out that Mr. Pumpkin Man here, with his giant pumpkin hammer, is not with those guys. He is, I guess, working with the soldiers and the knights. Now, this guy, I can kind of cheese my way through this guy, because... Oh, shit. Maybe. <laughs> He's got very good reach with that thing. So, roll eight. Barricade shield, man. It's a winner. Get in and try not to hit his head, right? Try to close some distance here. Try to get behind him. There we go. And if you can get some successful hits on this guy quickly enough, you can bleed him. Oh yeah, Barricade Shield is serving us very well against this guy because he hits pretty damn hard. How many times? that many apparently shoo yeah the difference between barricade shield and not barricade shield is that getting <laughs> your guard broken even with that giant ass thing he cannot get through this shield with that weapon art it's wonderful we got another sanctuary stone and I think I mentioned that that is uh, basically your Standard item from the pumpkin heads. Okay, another smithing stone. I'll take it. So you see where we were. Here's where like the burning hill is and stuff like that. And we went up through there. So now we're gonna climb back up. And we're going to go the way that you would have gone had you not discovered the Claymore route. This is a really, really cool level. I very much enjoy Castle Morn. I think it's got uh, kind of like a Demon Souls Boletaria type vibe to it. And I mean I mean that in like atmosphere and difficulty level. This is, uh, I feel like this is about like, you know, 1-1 type difficulty. Specifically for newer players. So this part sucks. Uh, what you want to do is don't go past that line like where the actual bridge starts right there, stay on this side. 
get rid of this guy. And what we want to do, ideally, is get rid of these guys. Crossbow shoots pretty fast. I would imagine we should be able to get rid of these guys just fine with it. Like, once they get close enough, it shoots faster than the bow. So, pull these guys. One at a time. He's on the ground. That's weird. I'm perfectly fine with that. Get a strong attack and a light. There we go. And this is going about as smooth as it can go right now. Like, there's two of these guys over here. So... You see the other one that's up on the pillar there? Let's see if I can hit this guy with it. Well, not quite. <clears throat> I really don't know how he just hit me with that. That was kind of strange, but he died. Even though they fly, if, uh, if they fly off of anything, they die. It's very satisfying. It doesn't make a lick of sense, but I enjoy it nonetheless. And these giant feathery arrows sticking out of me. We can't get giant crazy feathery arrows like that. I wish we could. So this part, uh, this part's a little bit weird. There's multiple ways that you can go, right? You can go down this ladder here, which is what we're gonna do first, but then there's two other directions that it splits off in. We're gonna cover all of them, don't you worry. So in this direction, you're going to have like one or two misbegotten's waiting over here for you. I can't remember if they like jump over the edges or not. I mean, keep your shield up just in case they do, right? Here we go, there's the other one. And he comes out like that. Ready to fuck you up with that combo. Ugly stuff. And they dropped the old fang. That's the first time we got that item. Let's take a look. It should be a crafter. Yep. A rarely seen specimen of beast fang. Material used for crafting items found by hunting carnivorous beasts. These multiple overlapping fangs grow from a single root. Perhaps they're a vestige of the primordial crucible. There's that word. Crucible. We fought a crucible knight. You know? Stuff that kind of goes back to dragons and whatnot. And it looks like these guys... I mean, they have wings and stuff. They Nice. We got two tier two ones. We should be able to upgrade our flail again by the end of this. But... Everything seems to kind of go back to dragons, you know? Very, very dark soulsy. And there, there's nothing here. Like, you don't get anything for walking out on this. It doesn't break or anything. It's just... It's just atmosphere. So now, without falling, which I've done quite a bit in this series, we're going to go back up this ladder. And we're going to go the right direction. So, I believe what you'll be drawn to do every time you get to this point in the game, pick up our butterflies, is you'll be drawn... To this cliff because there's a grace down there right you're gonna be like oh a grace thank god i can at least go there to save my progress it doesn't matter it's not important at all to do that these break by the way these wooden fence ledges uh watch your step in case you need to roll you know like if you're gonna roll something so it doesn't matter what you do right here. Like, you can either roll off where the fence breaks, or you can take this ladder. doesn't matter. I just want to show both ways to show you that it really doesn't matter. And there shouldn't be anything back here. And the grace is just on the other side of this wall. And you can jump over this wall to get to it, if you want to. But don't do that. You want to go this way first. Because we're looking for somebody. So there's more fighting over here. Yeah, we'll get them both, huh? Oh! He was just barely out of range of that smack. Should have knocked his ass out of the air. That's what I was trying to do, anyway. Got another golden rune. Damn, there's a lot of blood here, man. Like, there's been some serious fighting here. These look like cannonballs on the ground. Like, cannons being... Look, there's two more right here. I don't know where the cannons even are. I don't even see them in this place, but they are definitely being shot. And I like to look over the edges in these broken areas because this right here would probably be an easy way for you to look over the edge and notice that you missed an area to your immediate left as soon as you entered, right? Like, that might be your ticket to notice that. 
Then we'll work our way up here, and we're going to find Irina's father. Uh, there's a face I've not seen before. I'm Edgar, warden of this castle, as ordained by Lord Godric himself. But you can see how things have turned out. The menials have all rebelled. They gave me good service, or so I thought. But it seems it was all an act. Foul creatures, as it said. And true enough, they're foul inside and out. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but whatever you come here to do, I'm afraid Castle Morn won't hold much longer. Take this by way of apology. And he gives you the sacrificial twig. So here you get an option. You can either not give him the letter and he will stay here. But if you give him Arena's letter, he will go back to where she is. And it's going to be a not very happy scene. We'll cover it once we finish this place and you'll see what I mean. Uh, we have to do one more thing in order to get him to leave. Like giving him the letter alone isn't enough to get him to leave this place. Um, but what I'm going to end up doing is uh, trying to complete this guy's quest via beating the boss. And uh, you'll see what happens. I, I think giving him the letter here and now is one of two steps that are required in order to get him to go back to where she is. I see. From Arena. Thank you. I'm in your debt, but I can't leave yet. Even if the castle should fall, as commander, I must remain to ensure the treasured Sword of Morn does not fall into the wrong hands. So, one interesting thing here is that I probably should have showed this before giving it to him, but if you read the item description for the letter that she gives you in your inventory, um, if you can even do that, I think what I recall on my other character is that it doesn't say what the letter says. Like, you can't read it. But, I mean, he graciously takes the letter from you, and then in that last part of dialogue he says, I can't leave, though, because there's a special sword here that I have to protect. If you see Arena, do tell her that her father will come for her. Once he's fulfilled his duty. If you see her, her father... Okay, so he shouldn't go anywhere, according to his dialogue. But we're going to do the second thing, which is we're going to go find this sword, this sacred sword of Morn that he's talking about. And it's going to have some interesting properties, and it's going to help us make out some of the storytelling a little bit as well, once we get to it. But yes. Yes, indeed. He is the leader of this castle, appointed by Godric, he said. So Godric the Grafted, the decrepit demigod, is what he's referred to as. Alright, great stuff, man. We are starting to piece together some of this story. It's great. Um, Alright, we found the grace. It is right about, I would call it maybe the 30% mark of this dungeon. So we still have plenty of Castle Morn left, which is great because there's plenty of exciting stuff I want to show you guys in this place. And it's just a lot of fun to play through. I, I really savored playing through this on my other character. And I'm going to enjoy it on this one for sure now that I know what to expect. But... I'm going to call it quits here, not permanently, just for this video. You guys know that I'm going to blast you with more Elden Ring, of course, but um, this is a great place to stop because we found ourselves a grace, and now we can push forward in the next episode. So thank you guys so much for joining me on this episode of our in-depth playthrough of Elden Ring. I've been your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and I will catch you guys in the next video.